At the southern end of Africa's Great Rift Valley lies Gorongosa National Park, a vast, unexplored wilderness devastated by civil conflict. Now, the park is joining forces with biologist Edward Wilson to create a research facility like no other, the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Laboratory. Together, they're bringing some of the brightest minds in science to Mozambique, discovering Gorongosa's secrets, nurturing the next generation of champions, and restoring this once mighty ecosystem. My name is Jen Guyton, and I am a mammalogist and large mammal ecologist. I'm aiming to understand sort of the underlying processes in this floodplain. My focus will be on hippos because they're ecosystem engineers here in the park. I'm going to be looking for signs of hippo impacts, things like hippo entry and exit points, hippo channels, hippo tracks, which like we're seeing this. all along here, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because um, they're having such a huge physical impact on the landscape, which you can see. That's what I'm most interested in seeing today. Surely there must be like a huge impact on the environment then that there's only, what, 10% of the hippos that used to be in this lake? We started at 3,500 before the war and now uh, we're down to 250. So uh, surely, surely we're not getting all the benefits that, uh, that we got before the war. This will be perfect for launching a boat. It's a little bit muddy, but I think it'll be okay. I have so much to learn from Bob and Jeff. They've both spent their entire lives in Africa and know how to deal with every possible problem. Jeff can back right in with the truck and put the trailer right in. We'll push the boat in. Let's go help Jeff. All right. Okay. So I'll be looking for an area with fewer hippos and an area with more hippos, comparing the effects that they're having on the landscape. Hippos are moving in and out of the water, creating these channels that disperse water, create habitat for other animals. In areas where there are few hippos, those channels often don't form, which means that we're losing the ecological benefits of having the hippos here. There's sort of a sparse tree over there on the bank, and if you look just to the left, you can see a patch of shiny lumps, and those are the hippos. This is great. I'm sure they're hauling up and grazing on this uh, this nice green stuff up here. Jesus, that is a lot of hippos. Have a look. Holy crap, yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh yeah, there are loads of them. Wow. You don't get to see this very often in Gorongosa. You really don't. I hope to figure out what our target population size should be. How many hippos do we need to bring back to Gorongosa to restore their beneficial effects on the park's wetlands? Restoring the hippo population means more grazing lawns on the floodplain. More grazing lawns means more herbivores. More herbivores means more predators. Hippos could be the crux in this entire restoration scheme. I'm really thrilled to be out here working with a team of such talented scientists. I mean, I'm pretty early on in my career still, and so it's great to be able to witness these amazing scientists at work and to be able to work with them on this team. Small steps on a journey of a thousand miles. Each new discovery bringing Gorongosa closer to its original vibrancy and hope for all of the world's wild spaces along with it.